devils in the air Spreading everywhere Touching nations One life at a time Ooh. When you're carrying the presence of God on your shoulder no matter what is thrown at you it is going to fall off as a straw poisonous snakes will bite you and the snake will die you shall stamp over every scorpion you just have one assignment continue hosting the presence of God on your shoulder Please be seated. What a wonderful month. <laughs> Ever since our people are connecting on our live stream, I have changed the manner of our ministry because right now I do not consider you as a, a far participant. Those that are connecting through the Zoom, we are enjoying your presence in this room as much as you are enjoying our presence in your room. Can we give them a warm welcome one more time? Give them a warm welcome. The church in Montreal loves you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jo Joshua 3 verse 15. And those who bore the ark came to Jordan. Everybody say, those who bore the ark came to the Jordan. So that means that even if you are carrying the ark, you still have to face Jordan. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? Just because you're carrying the ark does not mean that there will be an absence of a Jordan. In fact, especially because you're carrying the ark, you have to encounter a Jordan. Are you getting this? So when you face a Jordan in your life, you have to understand Jordans don't care for anybody and everybody. Jordans are sent against people that understand that they have a grace on their life to carry the presence of God. The moment you are a presence carrier, you are now a threat to the enemy and he has to send you Jordans to interrupt the presence of God that you carry on your life. So when you are a child of Jesus that is pursuing the presence of Jesus, what does the enemy do? He wants to interrupt your pursuit of the presence of God. I want you to say this after me. The enemy, the enemy loves, loves to interrupt, to interrupt my, pursuit my pursuit of the presence of God. So when you see a Jordan in your life, you have to immediately recognize this. The enemy wants to disrupt your intimacy with the Lord. Disrupt every Jordan in your life. Wants to what? So let me put it this way. If it is the presence of God that is causing the Jordan to fight you. It is the presence of God that is going to stop the Jordan. Amen. But what happens, majority of times with, with our believers, what happens is that we are pursuing the presence of God. Jordan comes with mighty words. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that to your kids. I'm going to do that to your family, in your marriage, in your finance. Ooh, suddenly, the child of God drops the ark. And now you start focusing on, please pray for me. You heard that before? Yes. You heard that tiny sound inside? Oh, somebody call some intercessor and pray for me. No, 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 no. Now is not the time to panic. Now is the time to continue hosting the presence of God on your shoulder. Please. Your neighbor is a little too quiet for me this morning. So would you turn to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Don't panic. Now is the time to continue 
hosting the presence of God. Now the next line is important. On your shoulder. On your shoulder. Ah. <laughs> I'm seeing a vision of poison darts that are being thrown against some people. Poison darts, words, hurtful words that have been thrown against some people. But you know, this is the thing. When you're carrying the presence of God on your shoulder, no matter what is thrown at you, it is going to fall off as a straw. Poisonous snakes will bite you and the snake will die. You shall stamp over every scorpion. You just have one assignment. Continue hosting the presence of God on your shoulder. When problems come, it is not a time for you to reduce the number of times you go to church. It is a time to increase the number of times. The number of times you pray must increase. The number of times you pick up the Bible, if it was once a day, when trouble arises, when Jordans arises, you had to pick up the Bible once, twice, thrice, four times, five times. Every one minute you get, open it up, read it a bit, read it a bit, read it a bit. Continue hosting the presence of God. Jordan is shouting. Jordan is screaming. Jordan is challenging. Jordan is saying that I will kill you. I will kill your family. I will kill your children. Ignore the Jordan. And you, uh, while you're cooking, you have to go, Oh, Rasuraya Manteria. <laughs> while you're stirring the pot, you go, Shelamandoro, Marozalamo, Mambreke. In the mighty name of Jesus. This word is carrying an instruction. Continue hosting the presence of God. Listen, help me. Help me. Touch three people and say, continue hosting the presence of God. If you don't know them, just wave your hands and say, hey, continue hosting the presence of God. Open your mouth and say, continue. Tell your name. Call yourself and prophesy to yourself. Continue hosting the presence of God. On the Zoom call, lift your voice and say it. Continue hosting. Prophesy to yourself. Prophesy to yourself. And say, continue hosting the presence. The devil is threatening. Continue hosting the presence of God. Things are happening right now as I'm speaking. In the name of Jesus. Let me give you a quick, quick strategy of handling Jordans, okay? Quick strategy of handling Jordans. There is two ways that you can go to your destiny. Two ways. Two ways. One, you override the storm. What's that? Two, you go through the storm. There is no third way because every child of God that is going to a promised land will always find an interruption will always find a Jordan always right <laughs> some people are like I'm looking for the perfect ministry on YouTube where they can cancel out all my Jordans hey if you find that ministry let me know I'd also like to have a membership there because there is no such ministry where you can find where they can delete all your problems. If any man of God is promising you that, uh, I don't know if he's read the Bible. Because Jesus himself said, in this world, you shall have tribulations. Ah, you shall have Jordans that are swelling up. See, you went quiet now. You shall. It's a promise. It's a promise. So there's two ways to handle that prophecy. What is that? When you see a tribulation, you go head on. And you go through that Jordan with one thing on your shoulder. 
the presence of the Lord. <laughs> now some of you are like, can you, can you tell us how we can override the, that? That's the one, that's the easy one. Hey, that may not be the easy one, but I'll tell you how to do it. You see, when a plane is leaving an airport, the pilot is in touch with the watchtowers that monitor weather conditions. And there is a radioing in with the pilot to the location you are about to reach. And they say, at this point, at this point of your journey, there is great storms. And there is a recommendation given to the pilot. All you need to do to overcome this storm is to fly 30,000 feet above. He said, when you, when you reach this location, if you have enough altitude yeah, yeah, yeah. to go above the storm, yeah, 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 yeah. every storm, every noise, every chaos will be beneath you. And if you are an eagle, you will use that fly higher. <laughs> so, as a child of God, you have both options. One more time, as a child of God, you have both options. But one requires more training. The other one doesn't require necessarily more training, but you need a lot of faith to just bash through it. <laughs> so in other words, both ways we are still making it. With the presence of God on my shoulder. Say it out loud. With the presence of God on my... I'm going to make it. Say it out. I want you to confess this because we are in an hour of great peril. So you want you, I want you to confess it. I will not die one day ahead of my time in the name of Jesus. Say it out. I am, I am seeing, I am seeing a woman. I'm seeing your black heels and I'm seeing that the heels are broken. And I'm seeing you trying to use, use a, 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 a yellow tape to hold that heels together. But let me prophesy to you, no matter what you do from your end, my dear, you know, the next stone, the heel is going to break again. Even if you get nice glue, but it's still a glue. You understand what I'm saying? But if you go to the presence of God, the presence of Jesus will not just put a band, it's not just a band-aid solution. The presence of Jesus will create you a new shoes for you. Uh, so there is somebody here, for a long time, you are just trying to sustain yourself. You're trying to drag yourself. You're dragging through that process. You're like, I just, just want to make it through the day. I just want to make it through the week. God is not just giving you a band-aid today. He can heal your heart and make it like new. Where people around you will look at you and say, what happened to you? Did you hear what I said? People that thought you will never make it are going to be shocked by the God you serve. There is grace available today in the name of Jesus. Sit down, let me explain to you. You see, Jesus, baby Jesus, the way he went through, you'll see there's two ways in the life of Jesus. Number one, he had an information that was radioed in. I'm just saying it so you understand in our simple terms. To their mama and papa. Information was given to them saying, you need to leave this location. You have to leave this place because King Herod is trying to take the life of the child. So there was an information that was given to Joseph and Mary that gave them wisdom 
to leave the location of the storm. Few years later, another information came to them. Saying the king that was trying to take the life of the baby, he is dead. Now you can come back. So a prophetic information that comes into your spirit that will allow you to ride over the storm. And you don't feel the storm at all. But it doesn't mean the storm wasn't there. But it's just that you're flying 30,000 feet above it. Things are happening. There is a, a certain grace that will come to people that are connecting newly to this ministry. It's the grace of dream realms. There is a grace of visions. And there is somebody watching me and you've been seeing certain dreams about your husband. And you're like, I don't understand these dreams. I don't understand this. Why am I seeing this? Why am I seeing this? Why am I seeing this? Could it be that God is speaking to you? I know what you saw. You saw an incident that is not supposed to happen with your husband happening. And you've not even shared it with your husband. You're keeping quiet because you're freaking out saying that this dream is from the devil. Is it from the devil? Just because it's a bad dream. Does it mean that it is from the devil? Or God is showing things to you that is supposed, that is going to happen to your husband if you do not pray. So in the name of Jesus, I rescue you from that spirit of Herod. Why is it that Herods of today is still coming after you? And that is because the enemy knows that you serve a God that brought a stamp out of nothing. And that he is about to repeat that in your life. Ah, Look, I don't know if you came to church to hear a cute sermon, but this is a prophet of church with a tailor-made prophecy for your life. You shall live in the name of Jesus. 30 seconds, give Jesus the best shout of praise. Declare it, I shall live in the name of Jesus. You see, Jordan swells for a reason. Jordan swells for a reason. Jordan is asking the question, who are you? Who are you? What is Jordan asking your question? Every trouble in your life is asking a question, who are you? Every Jordan is asking the question, why should I listen to you? Paul I know. Jesus I know. Who are you? Starting in Genesis. Starting in Genesis. Every trouble against humanity started with an identity crisis. When Satan approached Adam and Eve, the questions he asked was rooted in identity. He said, he said, do you know eating this will make you something? Who? He's saying, this is who you can be. Hey, Satan, I don't need you to tell me who I can be. I have the word of God telling me who I can be. I don't want you to tell me who I can be. One time, a young man approached this Jordan. His name was Elisha. He looked at this Jordan. He says, I have seen Papa Elijah overcoming this Jordan. He said, I'm not very sure about my identity. I'm not very sure if, if my prophetic is, is really working. I've not tried this before. I've seen Papa do it, but I'm not really sure about who I am. Yet he believed in who he was. So he pulled his mantle and he beat the river Jordan and he said where is the God of Elijah where is the God of my father every Jordan in your life every Jordan in your life is questioning your identity but if you can locate who you are in Christ 
today you're going to beat up that spirit of Jordan. Listen. So God is speaking to Israelites, the entire nation of Israel is stuck by a river. Entire one whole nation is stopped by Jordan. And God says, "I'll give you the solution." But the solution is not for all of you. A solution comes to those who have an identity and they have a name and they are called the Levites. And their identity comes from the fact that they carry the presence of God on their shoulder. Yeah. So now with that presence of God, with that identity of I know who I am. Yeah. The moment my feet touches that water, the river will split into two. Jordan questions who you are. Jordan challenges who you are. Jordan reminds you of your past failures. Jordan reminds you of of all the things that didn't go well. Jordan reminds you of how you are still weak and you are on the other side of your promised land until you know who you are. Listen. The identity of a levite is not merely in the name that they've received from their father that name means nothing if they don't have the presence on the shoulder yes. Yes. listen remember some people use the name jesus and yet the bible says the demon possessed person beat them up in the market and they ran naked and they were using the name Jesus it is not in using the name it is using the name with the presence of god on your shoulder that will cause demons to bow down to you and the bible says all the way to jericho they witnessed this miracle their enemies they witnessed this miracle people that were waiting to see them drown they witnessed because jordan the moment it stopped it started piling up piling up piling up now the river was flowing vertical <laughs> ah you didn't hear me because you see the god you serve is able to make a river flow horizontal and vertical <laughs> look at your neighbor and say that's my god that's your god that's your god that's your god and they saw all the way all the way next verse go to verse 16 if you don't believe me it's in the verses the waters which came down from upstream stood still and rose in a heap so the the river was flowing this way now it started rising up in a heap can i <laughs> can you imagine it was going this way now it's as going this way rises in a heap very far away at adata the city that is beside zaratan so the waters that went down into the sea of araba the salt sea failed this is what is happening two things the moment you recognize your identity and the presence on your shoulder identity and the presence on the shoulder you can't be quoting the name and not praying about it you can't be using the name and not have faith in the name you can't be using the name and not run after that name you can't be using that name and not sit at the feet of jesus are you learning something the moment you do that two things will happen to you number 1 it is going to cut off and that which was flowing horizontal will now flow vertical what is happening no more the river is flowing in the realms of man it is now flowing upward everything that has been crossed in your life will begin to be straightened up by the power of god some agree with me and shout an amen in the name of jesus I want to pray with you this morning as you come in agreement with this word 
anything that has not obeyed your command of the grace of God on your life, as you submit to Jesus, as you submit to the heart of God, it has to be straightened out. It shall no more hinder you. It shall be straightened out. Every trouble straightened out in the mighty name of Jesus. You have to believe it. You have to believe it. No, 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 no. No, you have to believe it. You have to say every trouble in the name of Jesus. This week, you shall be straightened out in Jesus' name. You're coming back with the testimony. Listen, seven days, seven days. I am speaking now with clarity. Seven days, you're going to hear that this word has matured in your life. Seven days, this word is manifesting in your life. 30 seconds, clap your hands and celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Ah. And the second thing that happens, this river used to feed the salt sea. There is a sea that they faced some time ago. Huge sea that was bigger. But that sea didn't become a sea by itself. It had sources that was feeding it. Child of God, in the month of September, as you grow in your identity, as you grow carrying the presence of the Lord on your shoulder, you're not just going to deal with the sea. You're now going to deal with the source that feeds this problem. It's time to cut off the head of the problem in the name of Jesus. It's time to locate the head of the problem. The head that feeds the body. The source of the problem. And the source was an identity issue. The source was what? An identity issue. Because the, the river knows the harvest is near. Verse 15 again. The river knows that your harvest is near. Child of God, do you know the harvest is near? Or has the river caused you to drop the ark on your shoulder? Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Has the river in your life caused you to drop the presence of God on your shoulder? Has the river in your life caused you to drop the pursuit of God? Pick up the ark of God again. Know who you are. Know who is by your side. You're going to cross this Jordan in the name of Jesus.